welcome to News 13's Coronavirus Virtual Town Hall. I'm George Roberts. As the state continues to reopen, we have two counties moving to the green phase of the governor's plan this Friday. Monroe and Pike counties will join Wayne and Carbon counties, meaning that the Pocono Mountains are finally fully reopened to the public. But there will be guidelines for both businesses and customers. And here to discuss that is President and CEO of the Pocono Mountains Visitors Bureau, Chris Barrett. Chris, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, George. Good to see you. There are some key things that are going to happen this Friday. Uh, businesses will be able to basically reopen in this green phase, which is different than the yellow and the red. And Chris, maybe we can highlight some of the things that will be different. Well, we'll see a lot of things that will be different. Um, dining will look different. Attractions will look different. Resorts will look different. Uh, we're advancing now into the green stage, which means a lot of properties can open up to either a 50 or 75 percent capacity, depending upon where they were in the yellow phase. So a lot of it will look different, except what won't look different is social distancing guidelines, masking, all those things that we had done in the red and yellow phase, you know, will still be happening in the green phase, except there'll just be a little bit more freedom of movement within the guidelines. Let's clear one thing up that people have been asking about how resorts can be open. And, and one thing we should, should tell everybody that resorts are hotels. And right. hotels were able to be open even way, way back at the beginning of this, correct? Correct. So they were classified as essential businesses and they were allowed to operate at any capacity virtually in the red and yellow phase. Many closed in an abundance of caution and decided not to operate. So that's where I think the confusion is. Short term rentals were also initially considered essential, but then as we advanced, through about a month, they were considered non-essential. So that could have been where that confusion was as well. But mm. yes, they were classified and still are as essential businesses. Right, but within the resorts, there are things like restaurants and attractions, and they were treated differently than a hotel room. Correct, so they were not allowed to operate. So they were considered just as any freestanding restaurant would be. Now that we're into the green phase, they're allowed to operate at a 50% capacity uh, if they were not open in the yellow phase, of course, with all the mitigation guidelines. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody going to a resort now during the pandemic, like this coming weekend, for example, uh, how will that be different? How will it look then, uh, you know, before the pandemic happened? Well, I think immediately you'll see the fact that the resorts are adhering to or exceeding CDC guidelines for mitigation. You know, you'll notice there'll be social distancing, there'll be a lot of signing. They'll be, um, even though our resorts clean regularly and continuously, they will be even doing that more now as we get into that phase. And there will also be an expectation that the guests will need to follow specific guidelines when they're on property. And that's outlined to them before they check in and as they do check in. So there'll be definite differences. They'll probably also notice there won't be as many people um, in the properties because again, they're operating at a 50% capacity if they did not open during the yellow phase. And most of the major resorts did not. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at a 50% capacity until we get additional guidelines in the green phase. I would imagine the employees had a lot of training that they had to go through up to this point. They did. And in the yellow phase, especially within the last two weeks, a lot of our major resorts did call back employees uh, specifically just for training. And of course, there's prep work you have to do to get the properties reopened. But it was specifically just what would be new in, uh, in, in this new normal, in this new phase of green. And uh, some properties were operating before that. Skytop did open May 18th and uh, they were doing the same thing. And we expect that um, next week, uh, Mount Airy will open as well. Mm -hmm. Chris, I know you spoke in front of the Senate Majority Policy Committee this week in regard to uh, what's been going on with the Pennsylvania economy and how that's affecting uh, tourism. Mm -hmm. And one, a couple of things that people should note, and that is the tour, tourism industry generated about $4.2 billion in 2019. Now, is that uh, across the state or is that in the Poconos? So that's in the Pocono Mountains, and we hosted 28 million guests uh, during that time period as well. But one of, one of the things we were happy about hearing this, the senators say was that they realized that tourism is now the number two or even number one industry within Pennsylvania. And that's a message we've been trying to talk about, you know, for decades. And unfortunately, now with this shutdown, I think they're starting to realize how much your industry really contributed to the tax coffers, not only locally, but for the state. So. Uh, globally, it's between a 40 to $50 billion industry for Pennsylvania, and that's that's probably a low estimate. Ours alone in the four-county region, the Pocono Mountains, as I said, is 4.2 million. That's direct. That's not even induced. 
and we know we generate $518 million in local, state, and federal taxes. Now, how does that relate to the average folks that live here in the Pocono Mountains like me and you? If our industry wasn't here right now, each individual would have to pay $1,500 more in taxes to receive the same services. So it, it's a major industry. That's a and, substantial uh, amount, Chris. It is. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're, we were very happy to have the senators, you know, talk, talk about that and question us as to the importance of the industry and how, you know, we look at that reopening, rebuilding phase that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. You said, uh, quote, we're now in the fight of our lives. Uh, why did you say that? Well, we are, you know, it was unfortunate, but the comparison that I made was that it's almost akin to a war, you know, in a war, the economy is totally shut down and then it has to regenerate and rebuild. And I, I believe that's a similar comparison here. You know, we are in the fight of our life economically, and I think it could be all the fight of our lifetimes because I know in, in my lifetime, we've never experienced a full shutdown of economies within not only Pennsylvania, but the United States and in a lot of parts of the world. So I think this really has to play out for the next three to six months. And unfortunately, we feel that, um, that what we're going to see as a, as a byproduct of this is continued unemployment, which would affect our industry quite negatively, along with a lot of others mm -hmm. and people's livelihoods. And with the shutdown, there's been no hotel room tax being collected or very, very little. So now how is that going to play out over the next year for your organization? So our budget tends to be in the range of about 10 million. We spend between 75 to 85% of that directly on buying uh, television and digital throughout a number of different markets. That number this year is probably going to be about 50 to 75% less. So um, we're, we're also hopeful that there's some DCE, DCED block grants available to the counties that we hope we'll be able to get some of in order to market outside of our market to attract folks to be able to come to Pennsylvania. But it, it's a significant, many industries went through that. They, they took significant hits in revenue. And of course, we were one of them. I guess one thing in your favor, AAA is saying that more people are going to be driving to their destinations this uh, summer. Uh, so that's good because the Pocono is very close to major metropolitan areas. Right. And everything that we saw throughout the pandemic, we watched the research trends very carefully, showed us that folks would not be flying domestically, internationally or cruising, but they would travel within a 200 mile radius of their homes to visit friends and family, you know, maybe stay in an Airbnb, in a hotel, bring food back to their rooms and engage in solitary activities like enjoying nature and doing all those kind of things. As we put COVID in the rear view mirror a little farther, we're starting to see that concern be less and less. So we're thinking within the next few weeks that, you know, people will become more confident with staying at properties, especially after they see the efforts they're going through to mitigate. And you know, we're hoping that that kind of bounces back a little bit faster. And usually that does happen with destinations that are very strong dive, drive to destinations like the Boconos. Mm -hmm. I know you've been speaking with the different resort owners and I'm sure that they've had uh, many concerns, but probably the biggest one is that they have not had much money coming in over the past three months. Many people had zero money coming in. Uh, how are they able to you know, get, get through this and keep going? Yeah, that's a good question, George. There's a couple of things. There's a couple aspects to that question. So number one is, you know, cash flow, is, as you kind of highlighted, not only was there no money coming in, but a lot of a lot of our resort operators were refunding to folks who, who canceled because to them, the guest comes first, you know, so they wanted to make sure that they satisfied the guest. Number two is they were really worrying about their own team members, you know, the, for their safety, for their family safety. Um, financially, it's it's been incredibly difficult um, for those folks. Uh, I'm always uh, amazed at their resiliency, their determination, their grit, their innovation. And innovation really came to the forefront. I, I always think of Barley Creek all the time. There are many, many of our members in the four county um, area, but Barley Creek, um, Well and Paul Pack Brewery, just to, to name a couple, they're so innovative in how they approach this process. And some of them actually, in some aspects, became stronger. But there's no question from a financial standpoint that it was a significant hit for our industry in, in the Pocono Mountains. And we are in the Pocono Mountains, definitely the number one industry. And wow. it, it, it's it gonna have a significant impact as we go through the year. And Chris, for the sake of our region, we're wishing you the best this summer. Thanks for being with us. Chris Barrett, Thank Pocono you. Mountains Visitors Bureau.
Well, it's been a long three months for Pike County since the coronavirus pandemic closed businesses. And joining me now to discuss that is the executive director of the Pike County Economic Development Authority, Mike Sullivan. Mike, great to have you here on the program. Mike, let's talk Hi, George. a little bit back uh, when all this started. Uh, when things began with the pandemic, did you have any idea that businesses would be closed for as long as they have been? No, the initial the initial issue was for two weeks to overcome the possibility of overwhelming our health care situation. Uh, it's interesting to look at the actual numbers that actually occurred. The greatest day of utilization of the 34,700 hospital beds in Pennsylvania occurred on April 27th. And that only accommodated 8% of the total beds. So that was our worst situation. And right. all the economic implications from that have been quite profound. Now, what happened with some of the projects that you had going there in Pike County? I guess everything ground to a halt. It did. We had under construction a 70 bed nursing home in Westfall Township. Uh, for reasons beyond my my understanding, that was stopped and we lost about 10 weeks. When you talk to the developers, they'll tell you things like it cost them $10,000 a month just on interest payments. The same thing was true of 100,000 square feet that is under construction in Dingman Township. And we hope, hope that was going to be ready for the end of this year. All right. It still might, but it's going to be much tougher. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about uh, the way the selection of essential versus non-essential businesses was conducted by the state? Yeah, I, I think there are many people who have reservations about it. All right. They use what's called uh, NAICS codes. And some of those NAICS codes uh, were industry codes that define a particular type of company and some of them were essential surely and uh, other ones were not so essential but uh, they were not impacted also so uh, you get the feeling that there may have been uh, a fair amount of activity on somebody's desk in harrisburg who was picking them out uh, to the best of his knowledge. Mm -hmm. Would you like to have more um, say from the county level as to what happens within your county when something like a pandemic happens? Well, I think that's true. I, I feel that way. And certainly I think the commissioners were very uh, uh, eager to be involved in this construction. Many people call up and ask for variances. For example, the fellow who was doing the construction on the nursing home he said this is a medical institution and it should be allowed to go forward and at the time he asked for a waiver he was specifically dealing with cdc guidelines for construction so there was some question as to why that wasn't granted uh, and same is true of uh, of another hospital facility or or medical facility on route 739 at the intersection of Route 739 and Log Tavern Road. That's something we're working with right now, and we hope to have a lot of medical activity there shortly. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the businesses that uh, were closed. Uh, have you heard of any that are not opening uh, ever again in Pike County? Well, I don't want to say uh, names right now, but there are a number of them. Mm -hmm. Can you, can you give us a percentage? I was going to say, can you give us like a percentage of how many uh, total businesses that uh, won't be reopening in Pike? No, uh, but I, I dealt with about 60 small businesses, very small businesses. We set up a little bureau here during this uh, pandemic, and many of them called up and said, hey, you know, I, my husband, myself, we opened up this business and we wanted to buy houses, renovate it, and, and rent them out. Mm -hmm. And uh, what they went through the entire process. They're using Home Depot credit cards to uh, pay for the flooring and everything else. And right when they're ready to start renting them out, and they had many interested tenants, the governor's orders basically uh, prohibited the idea of transactions for real estate purposes. Mm -hmm. And that caused terrible heartache to these people. Right. They were They did this for the purposes of generating an income in their older years. 
Mm -hmm. I wonder how some of them can dig out from something like that, because especially if you've started, you know, right before the pandemic or, you, you know, you, you decided you were going to do some renovations, but now things are dragging on. I, you know, say you're a restaurant and you've done some renovations to the place and it costs you money and now you can only allow 50 percent uh, of your total capacity uh, into the restaurant. That's got to have a big impact. That is the discussion going on everywhere. If you ride down Broad Street in Milford, you'll see that the uh, Milford Diner has their parking lot fully occupied with tables that are six feet apart. Seems to be a lot of activity there, mm -hmm. but it's recent and that's only been going on for a couple of weeks. All the previous time they had to worry about paying for their own uh, uh, payroll and things like that. There are two partners who own it and they were actually giving each other uh, donations to the payroll. Mm -hmm. uh, very difficult to lose three months of activity and come back from it. All right, what's your plan for Pike County? How are we going to dig out the county after a three month uh, uh, hiatus, basically, for a lot of these businesses? What, what do you think is going to happen? Well, being, uh, being an old Marine, one of the things that we talk about is the best defense is a good offense, and that's what we're doing. Uh, we are working right now with a number of projects uh, that we're really in a state of animation for for the three months, and now we're going back after them. For mm -hmm. example, we're, we're working with a, a hospital-type operation in Pike County. But I have to tell you that we had several interested providers on this, and two of them had to back out simply because of the fact that they were prohibited from doing elective surgery or elective medical treatment for a long period of time and they wound up losing a great deal of money and they cannot go ahead with new projects even in pike county right so right. we're going to be working with them on that all right good mike hey we wish you a lot of luck and uh keep that economy going in pike county and it hopefully it's going to be a good summer we're hoping Please, God. <laughs> well, on that note, Mike, Mike Sullivan, Executive Director, Pike County Economic Development Authority. Mike, thanks for being with us. Thank you very much, George. Well, non-essential Monroe County businesses have been closed since March. Many of them, such as gyms and hair salons, will reopen this Friday. And joining me now is the Executive Director of the Monroe County Economic Development Corporation, Chuck Leonard. Chuck, great to have you here on the program with us. George, pleased to be here. Let's talk a little bit about the economy of Monroe County. How do you think things are going to look once we reopen here in green? Well, of course, uh, we are uh, waiting uh, with bated breath to get open. And it's something that, of course, uh, you know, Monroe County is among the communities across the country that uh, is very uh, susceptible to this kind of disruption. And, uh, uh, you know, based upon our uh, reliance on, of course, tourism, uh, it's our biggest industry, of course, and, and uh, it's created a great deal of disruption to our industry. And I think that uh, uh, we're, you know, enthusiastically awaiting the opportunity to open. Sure. I'm sure you've heard from a lot of businesses that have had zero income over the past three months, the ones that weren't able to open. Uh, I'm sure that uh, added to that, they have to train and supply, get supplies ready, new supplies, things they haven't had to do before. I'm sure you've heard that that, you know, is causing a little bit of a, of a financial burden to many of them. Yeah, I think that we've, you know, of course, we've been involved in uh, providing loans to uh, loans. And, and uh, now it turns out uh, some grant money is, has come available. But uh, we've been reviewing uh, the financial information from industries all across the county. And uh, uh, it's dramatic, the impact that this has had on uh, uh, some of these companies. But I think that uh, we now have a, a program that uh, we believe uh, We'll be uh, we'll be able to implement over the next two weeks or so uh, that will provide some money to these uh, these impacted industries that will enable them to get back and running. And then when I say that, I think that, uh, of course, uh, uh, if you look at the projections, it looks like it will be uh, a comparatively uh, uh, compared to other industries, comparatively slow recovery for tourism and restaurants, et cetera. But at least. Uh, uh, we have some assistance for those industries to help them uh, get through this very difficult time. Sure, and that's good. Now, I know grants are important. They're good, especially 
when you don't have to pay back those kind of things, but the interest loans, low interest loans, even if they are low interest, they still have to be paid back at some time. And that, that can't be easy uh, when you've lost a lot of the business and we still don't know how consumers are going to react, you know, coming back into the marketplace. That's right. I think that the, uh, um, and, and to a certain extent, actually, we had a loan program that we were working with. We had uh, 79 ap approved applications that we were, uh, loans that we were going to make. And I, I believe the circumstances have uh, uh, enabled us to turn those loans into uh, grants. And we're looking forward to uh, uh, beginning that process so, uh, so that people can feel a little more comfortable about taking this money because there, there will be no amortization schedule with it. So it's uh, we think it's critical, especially based on some of the information we've seen. You know, many of these companies are, uh, you know, we're, uh, you know, having... Uh, it's a difficult operating a, a environment, no matter how you look at it. And right. I think that, uh, you know, this, uh, this help is sorely needed by many of these firms. Sure. Let's talk about how things uh, were before the pandemic. I'm sure you had a lot of projects, you know, economic projects going in the county. And what happened to some of those projects while we've had this well, downturn? Most of our construction projects uh, are uh, back up and running. And, uh, and when I say that, uh, some uh, actually, uh, while they, they uh, slowed up uh, significantly, uh, uh, they uh, never really uh, demobilized. And so we're pretty enthusiastic about the fact that, uh, you know, our big projects, uh, you know, we have a new company moving into Blakesley. They, their uh, move process has been slowed somewhat, but uh, uh, we met with some people today. The indication is, is that they're getting ready to go forward and we have the... Uh, uh, project uh, on top of the mountain, which is a 750,000 square foot facility uh, that's under construction. The NFI uh, building is being occupied by uh, uh, with uh, uh, material, and, uh, uh, and so that process is ongoing. And I think that uh, uh, we haven't had any uh, project uh, outright cancel yet, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, we have had some projects that have been slowed. And of course, your schedules are. Uh, we, we did receive one indication from one of our companies that uh, is getting ready to start up that the, their uh, project will now uh, probably take a uh, another to get up full into full operation will take them probably an extra year. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's disheartening to a certain extent. But I think that uh, a lot we have a lot of companies, even though we are significantly impacted in the tourism and hospitality area. Uh, you know, we also have uh, the uh, our large vaccine manufacturer who. Uh, uh, promises to uh, uh, have a you know do pretty well here in the in the coming future. We have many manufacturers that are uh, that are operating at uh, full tilt. Many of them uh, are looking for workers, as a matter of fact, uh, so that you can meet uh, the market demand. As you indicated, uh, the need for additional uh, uh, product, additional materials, is you know uh, uh, working. Uh, I mean, the uh, materials that. The raw materials that they need to sell and and uh, right. uh, put together is is there, and I think well, that the uh, you see we see Chuck is that the is that the big problem right now? Employees getting employees. Well, I I, I want I don't want to say that's the biggest problem, but it is a problem, and we've seen that uh, you know we have a, a number of manufacturing companies that have had difficult time. We have a a company that uh, you know has is having a they're really clipping along great and uh, he he's, uh, was on the phone yesterday uh, with him and uh, he could use uh, 15 to 20 additional people tomorrow now the career link is working hard to uh, identify people to put in that facility and i think that uh, uh, we're hoping that that uh, matchup will work out well and will deliver the workforce he needs in order to meet his uh, his customer uh, his customer demands but i think that uh, we do have a lot of a number of manufacturers who uh, have had some difficulty finding workers. Yeah, the pandemic, of course, has also changed the way we do business. In a lot of instances, we have many people who are teleworking or telecommuting, and do you think that is going to have an impact or, or change Monroe County? Yeah, you know, we we worry about that. I mean, uh, to a certain extent, I think that uh, we have uh, a lot of people, a lot of companies that have indicated to us in this loan process we're going through that. Uh, they were surprised that uh, uh, telecommuting has worked out as well as it has for them. Uh, and as a matter of fact, if you look at some of the nationwide statistics, uh, uh, productivity is way up. And uh, I think that uh, uh, it's been attributed to uh, the 
the benefits of working at home. But I think that, uh, and, and of course that, uh, that could have an impact on the value of commercial real estate, et cetera. I think that, uh, you know, there's a, you know, we had real estate people in the office today and we had a little bit of debate about it. And I think that uh, the, uh, the opinions are mixed. Some people believe that uh, it will require, require additional space because of the need to be uh, uh, socially distant, et cetera. But uh, uh, it is a, somewhat of a concern. I think that uh, you know, there will be many changes in the marketplace uh, at all levels and going forward. And I think that uh, uh, it will require some adjustment, I think, by all of us. But I think that the, uh, uh, you know, America is a very resilient country. And I think that uh, and our community is a very resilient community. And I think that uh, uh, we'll adjust to those uh, those challenges as we go forward. It's just that uh, it's very hard to nail down what what exactly they the, the changes will be. Of course, right. at this stage. Well, let's let's talk about this. Um, they say that during downturns or challenging times, it's a good time to start a business. Do you agree with that? I've heard that. Yeah, and I think that it is true to a certain extent. Is <laughs> you have to be uh, you have to identify the right business. It's a, that's a challenge, you know. And I think that uh, there are some things out there that. Uh, uh, we know of that, uh, you know, like I said, we have some companies that were very, uh, uh, how can I say this, uh, marginal at best before the, uh, 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 before the pandemic, and now they're going gangbusters. So, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's variable and it's very hard to say. Now, I think that, you know, we have, you know, of course, there's a lot of companies that have difficulties, you know, the, you know, the uh, uh, exercise business, uh, the, you know, the, uh, uh, of course, restaurants and, and retail, although, uh, you know, I, I've been surprised that, uh, you know, our retail numbers are not quite as low as I anticipated they would be at this time. Uh, you know, when I say that from an employment standpoint, uh, but of course, hospitality is taking a major hit and right. uh, we're hoping that uh, we can, you know, bring those people back online as quickly sure. as possible. Well, Chuck, we want to thank you for being with us today. Chuck Leonard, Executive Director of the Monroe County Economic Development Corporation. Thank you for being with us. George, thanks for having us. Great. Good talking to you. You too. Take and care. I'd like to thank all my guests for appearing on our show today. And don't forget, you can get the latest coronavirus news on the Pocono Valley and night reports right here on TV 13.